Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, Rick and I were connecting and we haven't had the chance to get together in some time because there's a lot of things going on personally and professionally for both of us, mm -hmm. as well as in the lives of a lot of the leaders that we're fortunate enough to work with. And so we thought, let's mix things up a little bit and set ourselves up for just a more casual conversation around some of the topics that um, either we faced into recently or that we've noticed some of the leaders that, again, that we're, we're blessed to work with are challenged with and, and just see where that leads as a hopefully value-added conversation for you. So we hope that you enjoy it. Yes, and it's great to be with you again, Leanne, and there, things are busy for you and for me, both personally and professionally. So we thought it'd be a good topic to talk about defining moments, right? As we get busy and all that, go through life moment by moment, there are certain moments that are more significant than others. So, you know, we talk a lot with leaders about defining moments, right? Where, hey, there's a conscious choice. We're aware that this is an important period of time. We have to make some sense out of it and make some choices, right? Yeah. And so for you, you know, I think, you know, how do you think about defining moments for yourself and also for the, the leaders that you serve? Yeah, um, this has actually been a pivotal concept that I wish I had honestly um, thought about and um, practiced in my life in leadership when I was younger. I think it would have been beneficial. But hey, um, <laughs> learning along the way. Um, in fact, leaders that that um, we work with and those that I've worked with for, for many years individually you're familiar with what we mean by defining moments and how we usually kind of do this in executive offsites or often I'll do this in, in when I'm on coaching is to reflect on those times when they could be the good, the bad, or the ugly, right? Um, positive experiences or challenging experiences, one in which you're forced to make a critical decision where you're confronting old beliefs or maybe fears and um, it's, a, it's an experience that fundamentally changes you. Um, you can look back in your life and say, oh gosh, after that moment, I can see now that I'm different as a result of that experience. Because honestly, what happens in these experiences, and again, they don't have to be um, tragic experiences. Sometimes they can be very life-changing moments. Like when my father passed last year, that was I mean, I can remember time slowed down. I can remember exactly, you know, at everything that happened and how it unfolded. And when I called you and you helped me, <laughs> like, take this, you know, it, it, it's um, moments like that certainly um, change you. But it could also be very subtle moments, like um, when you reflect back in childhood, when a, a grandparent maybe offered you a word of wisdom um, that really shaped your, your beliefs, your attitudes. But... I think of it as um, moments in which I'm making a decision. I'm choosing to make meaning of the event, the circumstance, as well as who I am. And it's not only I'm making a decision around making meaning on what that event meant in life and then who I'm becoming. So it's not just like the what, but the who, who, who I'm, who, I am walking away from that experience. And I think with that perspective, it's really insightful to, to reflect from time to time. We do it in offsites. You can do it at a certain cadence in your coaching or just your personal practice and say, you know, what have these moments meant to me and who have I become? Because disruption, there's always going to be disruption. There's always going to be something hitting us. Yes, we have to do the what we need to do to react or respond to whatever that situation is, like when my garage flooded again last week. <laughs> um, but it's the who I'm becoming with each one of these circumstances or, or experiences. I don't know. How does that resonate with you? Right? Well, I love this notion of who am I becoming, right? Because we're always, you know, like I say often, you know, we're in the middle of a story, right? Yes, and we're the protagonist in the story. So what is it that we're going to be about as a protagonist and when we tell the story around hey what happened what were we thinking how did we behave right and uh, all the stories that we're in the middle of not all of them are defining moments right they're just life you're just going through life and stuff happens whether it's you know you know minor inconveniences or your technology is not working correctly they're annoying and, and you're in the middle of a story it's not necessarily a defining moment right, right. so as, when you talk about defining moments you know i think about some are 
big that you can see coming, right? You know, and life experiences like when graduating from a school or making a choice of who I'm going to marry or who I'm no longer marry or, you know, things like that. Um, th those are, are known or coming up, right? But some moments happen randomly, right, from a work standpoint. Like, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about you know, pharmaceutical companies, you know, where they're doing R&D and maybe, you know, the, that the, all the research and love they poured into it doesn't doesn't pan out because right. they're their endpoints, right? right. Uh, a failed merger, mm -hmm. right? Um, a, you know, something else happened in terms of a, a loss of a large customer that sudden mm -hmm. and abrupt, mm -hmm. right? These things are sudden defining moments in terms of okay, what's going on with that business? Mm -hmm. And then as the leader of that organization, that how do I want to manage myself in that moment, and how do I want to help the organization go through it? Yeah, and it could also be um, business relationships that have served a point um, in time in the development of the business. And then as the context changes or the requirements change, you realize, you know, when you're talking about personal relationships such as marriage, right, there's times also when business relationships may need to shift, right, in terms of the scope or the focus or or even end because something new is, is evolving. Then how do you want to manage that for yourself, but then also lead the team through that in a way that is, um, you know, honoring, mm -hmm. right, of, of each person involved. So those can be also defining because whenever we're facing um, into a circumstance that could just be, um, yeah, it could be disrupting, but it also could just take us down a different path. How we go down that next path is again more important in some ways, right? Than than the what. And I, again, that's something I think if I had understood more acutely mm -hmm. earlier in life, I don't know if I would have made different choices. But how I in, engaged mm -hmm. with others at those moments, I think, could have been more refined. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you as you get experience, I won't say age, I'll say experience. Um, you know, you're 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 refining yourself, you're mm -hmm. hopefully becoming more masterful, more nuanced. Mm -hmm. Um and and you're being just really intentional about how you live your life and, and your leadership. And that's something that I, I love this concept of defining moments because it allows us to actually reflect every now and then and refine. So the reflecting mm -hmm. and refining then becomes more of like a personal practice mm -hmm. and um, hopefully when we look back on our lives and our leadership we've then touched our families and our teams and our organizations in ways that they're also widening their perception so when and we're passing along that capability mm -hmm. right so that they're they're using the stuff of life this the the accidental, the random, or the seemingly coincidental that actually has a larger purpose you realize later on mm -hmm. as a source for your growth. Yeah, so I'd love to explore a little more the refining moment. Because right? yeah. we talked about defining moments, okay, there, there's some big ones and then maybe not so big ones. There's some that we know are coming up. There's some that just kind of hit us suddenly, you know, both our personal life and our professional life. Mm -hmm. And this notion of the refining moments that we do work with leadership, right? Mm -hmm. Leadership is about working on yourself, right? Doing the inner work so that the external manifestation of you as a leader is in evidence for yourself and for the organization, for the teams that you lead. And that takes refinement, right? Mm -hmm. You know, taking that the core within you and continually refining it. So I'd love to hear, Leanne, from your perspective and sharing, okay, well, I wish I would have maybe been better equipped during these defining mm -hmm. moments, like what things might we do as leaders? Mm -hmm. Rituals, behavior, habits, mm -hmm. um, just routines that we get into that might be helpful in refining ourselves. Yeah. So that when a defining moment comes that we know is coming, yeah. or that hits us suddenly, we're better equipped yeah. to manage ourselves in that moment and be at our best. Yeah, and I, I um, actually have uh, Hawaii to thank for this, as well as some of the things I've learned from the people of the High Andes, where I think there's just a practice of um, looking at what we want to continue to embrace as a core of who we are and what we're ready to release. It's this idea of when I lived in Hawaii um, and you'd go to the Big Island and you would see this amazing lava 
like the earth generating herself and like spilling out. I probably got a little too close sometimes, but it's so exciting to see this generation of life. And a lot of people would look at the lava flow and say that's destruction. And yeah, it was um, destroying some, some areas, but there was also new life being generated. And if you step back, it was part of a broader cycle of um, destruction and creation, right? Um, in, in order, oftentimes, in a lot of cultural um, ways of perceiving the world, outside of um, the culture that I grew up in, the United States, there's concepts like in Japan or in Hawaii or in the high Andes, this idea of letting things go. Things have to kind of die for something new to be born. And it kind of makes sense if you think about it, but I think in oftentimes, I'll say for myself, when I get it to very linear, convergent, accomplishing kind of mode, I can... I can just be reacting to whatever the event is in front of me versus stepping back and saying, you know what, this is part of a grander cycle. What is it that um, I want to intentionally release in order for something new to be born? And that's actually a whole concept I'll even to conversations with leaders. It's a personal practice I do, I've taught my kids. We do various things like, um, not just at the end of the year, you know, when you write down all the things that you're ready to release and toss that into the fire, that kind of fire ceremony will, will, will reflect on from time to time when life is getting really fast. There's a speed at which life moves forward. That tells me it's time to slow down and be thoughtful about, well, if I carry into this speed of life and leadership and business challenges, all of who I was, I might be carrying around like, too much luggage. It's like when I overpack when I go to on vacation. <laughs> like I probably could get it down to a carry on, as you well know. I, I don't always do that. So um, I, I I think about well, what do I want to carry forward? What is it time to release? And so I think this practice, um, I try to be more um, consistent with. It doesn't have to be like every day, but it's yeah. it's when life speeds up when either there is a planned transition um, or you know something like the graduation of your of your um, your child like my youngest just graduated from high school going off to college these are these are rites of passage so to speak I know there's are coming but then there were some other things that have um, led to new transitions and those are more intentionally entered into when I'm in a regular practice of kind of like death and rebirth, letting the old beliefs go, saying this is no longer of service, this has been a part of who I've been, this is how I've handled things, um, I've led this way, but you know what, I intentionally wanna enter into this next phase with this belief. Um, I don't know, that seems to assist, so if you're doing a regular practice of release and regenerate, you know, letting the old die, letting the new be born. And then when something larger hits you as a defining moment, I find that I'm, I've got greater reflexes. You know, I can mm -hmm. kind of lean into it maybe with um, more of an elevated um, perception and, and then a place of choice and empowerment. Yeah, beautiful. You know, I was just as I was listening to you, I was thinking about, you know, this recognition that we're constantly in a state of transition, whether it feels like that or not, we sometimes we feel like we're fixed as human beings, right? Yeah. Until we look at a picture of ourselves from a few years ago and say, oh, where did that person go, right? Yeah. I don't look the same, even though that was me, right? I'm different, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it, it happened, you know, constantly, right? So even our bodies are in a state of regeneration, you know? And so just the one, the recognition that, hey, life is a constant transition or transitioning, even though we may not reference that. We may feel more fixed or we, we, our mental model may be a little more fixed when actually we're in transition. So I love that and that notion of that. I mean, recognizing that, um, you know, we've often talked about slowing down, right? The world moves very fast. And so being able to take deep breaths, calm ourselves even for moments at a time, minutes or a few minutes, to say, okay, and to orient ourselves, okay, I'm, I am in transition, maybe small, maybe medium, maybe large, mm -hmm. right? But this, these questions are, what am I willing to let go of? And what do I want to step into, right? Those are simple, but yet very profound things to, mm -hmm. to create that awareness, saying, hey, yes, I am in this moment, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, my additional reference is, what's the 
quality moment I can create now for mm-hmm. myself and for others. Right? Mm-hmm. Because we are not guaranteed quality in life, right? We all know people who had short times on the planet, some people who live for long times. And I'm grateful to be at the age I am. I aspire to be much older. Right? <laughs> and during that time, I want to create as much quality moments for others, right? mm-hmm. for my family, my friends, the leaders that I work with. Um, and for myself, right? Mm-hmm. Because I can guarantee quality if I'm purposeful, right? Mm-hmm. As much as possible, right? Mm-hmm. And I and I hopefully have a lot of quality moments in quantity, right? Yeah, right. right. And, and to me, that's a life well lived, right? And that, that's you know purposeful. And that's why I want to step into the while of transition. Yeah, it's um, a great practice that hopefully this sparks you to think about for your own life. If we step back from the day-to-day and consider that there's broader um, cycles of growth and renewal, right? I think a lot of indigenous cultures are much more into with that than we can be in a um, kind of more Western-driven. We know there's cycles of every quarter or business cycles, but we may not be as in tune with uh, growth cycles within ourselves as people and as leaders. And so from a more human-centered place, um, I think that's the invitation for all of us is like, how can we find that um, if you do it once a quarter to do your quarterly business review, why not a quarterly kind of cycle review for yourself, right? What um, defining moments have I experienced this past quarter? How have I made sense of what those moments have been about, those situations? Who have I become? Who do I choose to become going forward? And then how can I further refined by going into this next quarter with intentionality, right? With the sense of I'm going to think not only what I'm going to do, but how I'm going to respond and how I'm, to your point, leaving the world around me. So hopefully um, this gives you an invitation to maybe find your own defining and refining moments for yourself.